Hey, what's going on? This is Edison Abelard back again for another Unity 3D video. And this one goes out to Andy, who asked a question on YouTube. Actually, two questions. One, how do you calculate speed? And two, how do you add constant speed, whether in a positive or a negative direction? So we'll touch the first one in this video, and in the next video, we'll talk about constant speed. So just for some quick house cleaning, I have a simple scene set up here just trees and a random uh, spaceship slash bomber and of course with uh, infamous 47 insignia uh, I have a whole bunch of other stuff in here we have our player start now this all this is is a game object an empty game object at just about the point of our our actual player object and that's just so we can calculate the distance traveled from this location all right we already added a rigid body we have a capsule collider and this script i wrote check speed and the check speed has a few variables that we'll discuss later on but basically these are all the variables that we're going to need this position origin is just a copy of the player start location so that's how we're going to calculate the distance which um, this video we're really talking about how do you calculate speed well the formula for speed if we get outside of unity and talk to straight math speed is equal to distance divided by time now probably the one way you hear that the most is is 40 miles per hour or 60 miles per hour and what that is 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 that's in the span of one hour you're able to drive 60 units now that's the speed limit what you normally do it's definitely up to you I'm out here in Long Island, which means nobody ever follows rules. So 60, ah, you can do 75. <laughs> I, and I'm not condoning that. So don't go out or come out here to Long Island and say, yes, and tell me I can. Um, so let's jump into the script. Check this out. All right, so we have this check fire. And all we're doing is, is checking first to see if there's a key down or there's a key input. And then we check, is, hey, is that a space? Now that we know that it is a space, right? What's, our, what's the time delay? Now, this is simply to keep you from running the code over and over and over again on one frame. Now, if we jump back into our, our little environment here, click play, you'll notice this thing just eh, has this like weird jump to it. Well, if I go ahead and grab our player, right and change the speed we'll make it 20. now you see the player jumps but if i double tap nothing happens and the reason for that is is in our script what we're saying is is hey our current time is it greater than our speed delay and in here what we have is, is our speed delay is set to what our current time was at that point plus a time factor so in this case our current time is let's say it's seven seconds well hey guess what current time is seven seconds plus a time factor which is one that gives us eight seconds now when this when you click again I check to see hey what's the current time is that greater than what we know now is eight seconds if so move it all move it forward and do it again and that just keeps you from having this effect go on we jump back in here again play right definitely not a Looney Tunes cartoon this is this is not what we want way too many things happening at once and so I'm just holding it down really there's no need to press it because at this point it just keeps going now why is that well let's look at our stats first and foremost we have just about 67 frames and on a good day, we're talking about eh, roughly about 71 frames per second. Let's come back here. This update runs every frame. So in the span of one second, we have the potential to run this code 71 times. That's a little obsessive. So by doing by adding this code, we just keep this from running every frame in more or less every second. Now, of course, we can cut this down to half a second, but just so we can keep all of our math pretty much sync we're going to do that 
We're gonna leave it at one second. All right, cool. So now this game object transform. This is the most basic way you can move objects in in Unity 3D, just using translate vector up. Um, and if you've never used a vector three, vectors are math equivalent to to adding multiple forces and coming up with one last final goal. So if we have um, an up vector, which what we're using now is going up 10 and we have a vector moving right five is going to combine the two and see that we're now going at a slight angle forward. So it's just, it's a better way to calculate math. And when you get further and further, it's actually a lot more helpful because there's a lot of little tools that, that will help you really bring your game or, or interaction to life. Then we have our ship speed. Right now it's just set to two. And as you saw, two really wasn't cutting it for us. Um, we ended up changing it in the game. Now remember, when you change variables, especially like this, if I change this right now while the game is not debugging to 15, it's actually going to overwrite what I have here, wherever here is, <laughs> um, our ship speed uh, to two. It's gonna override it and make it 15 automatically. So if I hit play, you'll see I, I have a, a bigger thrust. Whereas if I had two here, See, the thrust is so much smaller. All right, so so that's basically what we're doing. Now we get into the meat. Let's check the speed. Now the way we're checking for speed, if I uncheck, uncomment this out, first we're using vectors, right? We already talked about that. Now one of those benefits of having vectors is it already has a built-in distance formula or distance function already in there. So Really, what what distance is is delta x, delta y, um, and that'll give you the distance between the two, right? So basically, what we're looking at is is, um, and of course, you still have the square root, right? <laughs> but anyway, so so basically, what we're going, what we're getting is is the distance formula all wrapped in one. Now remember that that position origin, our position origin is our player start. So we're checking to see the position of our, our, our player start from our current position. And then basically we're getting back this distance, right? The, then we take this distance information, which just gets doubled, which we don't need. Actually, I'm lying. Yes, we do need that. <laughs> Actually, no, we don't. See, this is what happens. You end up programming so long, you don't even realize what, what you're doing. All right, so basically, let me let me tell you what happened here. While developing, I noticed something um, weird was happening, and it was the fact that this wasn't working correctly. So let's, let's throw this back in there, and I'll explain why. All right, cool. So let me just grab our player, and that's not what we wanted. What we're, what we're looking for is, is this distance to change as well as the speed. Let's open this up, remove the stats, and you'll see the distance changes. And if you look, the distance is, is roughly about what this is plus two, which is the, the, really the size in, in meters this is. So our distance is basically where we're grabbing our positions, right? F finding the delta or the difference between our positions. Of course, X and Y are both objects, giving us a distance, right? Now our speed is a distance divided by our time factor. Now we already know our time factor is one, right? So we're not really checking to see, hey, you know, what is the, the time factor? We can actually just get rid of this um, so we don't have to do another equation. But hey, let's say you want to change the time factor to every two seconds. Then you can do that in the actual debug setting and check out what the speed is then. So it's, it's the simplest way to check out the speed of an object. Um, uses, it, it all depends, you know, it really depends on you and, and what your game is. You can do it this way, or you can do it another way. Using, boom, boom, let's get rid of this. Let's use our rigid body. So remember in, an, in a previous video, I talked about using a rigid body to add force. Now the reason why I prefer to use a rigid body, if necessary, once again, if you don't need the programming overhead, 
Um, for those of you who don't know, rigid bodies add a lot more um, computing power. So if you don't need them, obviously you don't have to use them. And if you're for some reason lagging in space or time or, or something is off, you can try changing that and seeing, hey, will the game run a little faster? Especially if you have hundreds of objects on the screen with rigid bodies. All right, so what are we doing? First, taking the ship speed, and it has to be higher. Now remember, it's gonna get overwritten anyways, but in this case, it definitely needs to be a little higher to run. Our speed delay, still happening. We still have that same code. Um, we don't have that, you know, making sure that it doesn't run every second, and I'll show you why. Rigid body, same thing as before. We're just gonna add the force, right? And then this time we're going to get the velocity, which is the combination of all the forces that are that are being applied to our object. So let's go back in, hit play. Now you'll see we have our, our, our little thrust, and now this looks very realistic, minus the hole in my ship. <laughs> um, hence why I try to, you see, I try to add this this, this little smoke trail, right? But it's absolutely a failure. <laughs> you still see the hole in there. Um, but it's about whatever. So basically what we're, what we have here is, is our rigid body needs to add force continually, right? So when, when we add this code up here that says, Hey, you know, chill out for at least one second before you can press it. If we add this code now, hit play, you notice something, right? I can't move. We can do let's bump this up to 50 right and what's happening is is because every frame this needs to be added force needs to be added every frame so that now leaves us to not being able to uh you know just add it and forget it in this case we have to continually add it so by by having one second delay we can't add it every frame so now by removing that we can add it every frame and it all works so that's how you calculate speed and that's how you get the distance. Now, what can you do with these two? You can grab the distance, right? And this is something you can still do with um, a ray cast is another great option to do um, this little trick. And basically you can see the distance between two objects and based on their distance and the speed, you can figure out when they're going to, to hit and if they're going to hit in the future. So that's just one benefit of using um, you know distance and speed so in the next video we're going to talk about constant force because let me tell you sometimes you may not want the user to have to hold this thing down you may want them to instead press it and this the force keeps going so in the next video we jump into constant speed positive negative